Hello there, my name is Ismaus, and today I want to show you how to make uh, this that shader uh, in Blender. I'm also going to give away the final shader uh, for you to download for free. Uh, you can just find it in the download link or you can go directly to my Patreon to download it for free. You don't have to be a Patreon uh, to download it. But uh, yeah, so let's talk about how I made the shader and uh, how it works uh, so that you can use it in your project if you want to. So yeah, if you want to watch the entire process of creating the shader from start to finish, you can go to my second channel, uh, Blender Money, and watch uh, the time lapse directly there. But uh, for now, I'm just going to explain how I made the shader. Uh, just do an overview, a quick overview on how the shader works and uh, how uh, you can also make it. So, so up here, you can see how the shader looks. Uh, it's a dark shader. So uh, basically, that usually is from the surface and then onto the object. That's why you can see that. Uh, have this dash here and the great thing about it is that you can mix it with a different material for example uh if say we wanted this to be a metallic surface uh, full metal and, uh, just add some you can see it works with quite a few things you can even uh, let me see prepare a new material here actually Instead of doing that, let me show you how it would work on a scene here because uh, you'd expect uh, some dirt here and maybe dirt here on these surfaces. So I'm just going to copy uh, this object so that I copy the shade as well and uh, import it into this project. Control paste. So you can see how this surface looks. Now I want to apply this to a different material instead of uh, this cube here. And you can see it based on the position of the object in the world. So that the further it is from the ground, uh, the less that it uh, accumulates. So let's see how we can apply it on this here. So uh, this, let me first isolate this with uh, the lights. And maybe this here, this here as well. So you can see we have this. It already has its own materials set up are uh, looking nice uh, so we don't want to mess that up quite a lot so what we can do is uh, just importing uh, the shader we just created so I'm just going to copy only this node here node group here copy ctrl C let me isolate this as well you can even work from here directly so uh, then I can select this object paste it paste the material node group there and uh, you can see this has a few inputs and uh, outputs. Uh, for the inputs, we have a shader input. Uh, for example, if you already have set up, if you have already set up these materials, you just need to drag uh, the material output of your original materials and uh, feed it directly into the shader input. Mm, like that. Now, if we preview this here, we should be able to see a blend of uh, the two nodes. Just isolate this so that you can see how this looks. You can see how we already have uh, that dot on the surface here. And uh, you can control the height of uh, that dot by controlling uh, this height here. Let me first bring back the lights. Yeah, so uh, this uh, node group here, the shader 2, has a date at that height map uh, preview. So you can preview this node to see where the dot is. It has to compile a bit. So let's wait for it. You can see uh, where the height is, where the dot is going to be. It's mostly going to be on this black area. Uh, but I can control uh, the height of the dot using this node group sorry this value here so i can make it less like that i should maybe also make it make make it possible to control the contrast of this uh uh noise so let's see because i'm saying that uh, it's not too visible uh this the that is coming it's coming out too visible on this side than this so i think i should also give you the option to control the contrast. Uh, maybe let me dive into that very quickly, into the node group, I'd find 
I think this would be the contrast. So I can just add a math node here with the operation power. And uh, that should help me control uh, the contrast. need this to be clamped you can see how that looks I uh, also just expose this value here so that we can use that and uh, I'm just going to call that that contrast so that you have control over that as well so just bring that back and you can see we also have more options here you can see where the dot is and uh, by bringing this contrast playing with this contrast you can play you can see how much of the dot you're bringing in onto the surface. You can also control uh, the roughness or how reflective the dust is going to be or how less reflective. You want that to be. So let me just put this to about 0.5. You can also control the height map of the noise. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, maybe let me just show you how I created the shader. Again, you can watch the time lapse if you want to do that. Uh, since I changed the shader a bit, let me copy this here. Hopefully, I can copy that directly into this. Uh, actually, you can't. So I will have to just adjust it, this one. Uh, but let me talk about this setup for a bit uh, before I upload the shader for you to download. Basically what it is, is just a combination of different noise maps at a different scales and uh, then I'm using okay because I can't yeah I, I don't think you can preview nodes inside a node group uh, but uh, basically I'm using the position the Z position of the object to control the mask, the height mask. So whenever I move this object away from the surface, it re it, re it retains less and less dust or dirt. You can see the closer it is out of the ground, uh, the more dirt it will have. And uh, this applies to, even when you rotate this, you can see how this is on head is being affected by this noise and that uh, it works both in EV and cycles so you can see how this looks again uh, this white surface can be can be any material setup I say you have a PBR shader import multiple images and I find myself some PBR textures Uh, let's see, let's see. You can even have a PBR material and combine it uh, with the shader uh, to get uh, the results you want. Okay, this is this is not working very well because uh, uh, the wood is the same color as uh, the dirt so let's find something different let's find maybe a concrete material uh, which is not as uh, which is not the same color let's get this uh, 
towels. You can see how that looks. So it's a very easy shade to use. Now you can use it in combination with, uh, with other shaders. So imagine if you're creating maybe a, mini, a medieval scene uh, with a lot of objects. And uh, by the way, you can also use this on a ground surface. Let's say, let me link, make sure this is recording. Let me link this uh, to this material. But this time around, I'm going to use, you can see it's all that. And remember, this is procedural, so it's stylable. You don't have to worry about uh, seams and everything like that. So you can make this ground as large as you want. Uh, it will never affect, uh, It will never. you'll never see any seams because this is procedural. So for example, if I say, actually, this is okay. Uh, so if I wanted to have some dirt on this area, Maybe I'll just drag this up until I can see clear tiles. And then maybe I sculpt this, subdivide this a few times, and I use a sculpt amount resolution. Subdivide this, then sculpt, sculpt this surface. you can see how you can use that to create different surfaces anyway that's it uh, the, the shadow will be available for you to download on uh, patreon for free but uh yeah thank you for watching